back, everybody. Matt in the back here. Hearing a little blue today. Yes, that's right. 14 years later, Avatar The Way of Water, the sequel to Avatar that came out in 2009. Finally, we got a sequel. I've said this many times before. I am not a huge fan of the original Avatar. He got Fern Goldie meets Dancing with Wolves meets Pocahontas. Um, and I would say visually, the original is visually stunning. The 3D was amazing. But now you gotta look back and go, nobody has a 3D TV anymore. So. The 3D aspect doesn't work anymore. Sorry. Um, and and I'm not a fan of Avatar 1 because it's James Cameron, the guy who brought us Terminator, Aliens, Terminator 2, True Lives, Titanic. I mean, he is the pioneer of visual effects. If it wasn't for him, there would have been no Star Wars Episode 1. There would have been no Jurassic Park. Okay? You get what I'm saying here? So yes, visually, Avatar 1 is amazing. Story and some dialogue and all that, not so much. So I consider that his weakest movie in his filmography, because I know the potential of James Cameron. Okay? James Cameron. So, here we are 14 years later, and we got Avatar The Way of Water. What do I think about this movie? Well, when it comes to sequels, James Cameron knows how to deliver. Terminator 2. Aliens. My point exactly. Not only considered one of the best sequels ever made, but some of the best action movies ever made. So going into this one knowing it's a sequel, even though my my expectations weren't that high, but on another level, like, this is Avatar 2, and it's a sequel, and we know what James Cameron can do with a sequel. So, here we go. Positives. Visually, once again, the movie is stunning. I saw this movie in 2D, not 3D this time. Because, I didn't want to go and go and once again, all the visuals, all the 3D, all. And then not focus on the storytelling. Not focus on the character. Now going in 2D still is visually stunning. I mean there are not just the landscapes and everything. Everything in this movie is created in a computer. The water, the trees, everything is created on a computer. And let me tell you, in the water scene especially, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, you are watching this movie, and you think, you would think they shot this in the actual ocean, with actual blue people. Because, you, I never felt like watching this movie, I was watching a computer. Most of the time, I'll get to that. But, I feel like I am watching a they really shot this on a location. That's what I'm thinking. Because the visuals are so amazing. And I didn't see this in 3D. But let me tell you something. I was watching this movie. And there were moments in this movie that I was like. I wish I saw it in 3D. I had never seen one like in the underwater stuff. I would have loved to see that in 3D. Felt like I was actually in the ocean. There were scenes where rain is coming. Rain is coming down. And I'm like, man, seeing that rain feel like it was, was going to hit you would have been amazing. 
But visually, this movie, once again, the pioneer of visual effects has stepped it, stepped it up again. The action, this movie had action in it. Now, I'm not saying this movie is like full action all the time. No. So if you're going into thinking this, don't. But the action is really good, especially in that third act, when he really cranks up the action. Very good action in this movie. What I enjoy most about this one, other than the first one, is the character development. This movie is more focused on character. Well, yeah, I think that's why a lot of people are complaining that it's over three hours long, it feels slow, there's not enough action. Because this time we focus on character. Uh, Jake Sully and Sam Warrington has a family. He has four bambinos. So we really focus on the family, the kids, especially. We focus on this daughter, uh, C3, voiced by Sigourney Weaver. I'm not going to get into how that all works. That's a little bit of a spoiler. But he also has two sons. And the dynamic there is very good. And what, what, the one thing that, and then we also developed this other clan of, um, avatars, if you will. The Navi, another Navi clan. Like, Indians have clans, the Navi have clans. It's all the circle of life, okay? So, there's other, even the movie we get to develop their family. Cliff Curtis does the voice and the motion capture for the main chief. Kate Winslet is the, plays his wife. Yes, Kate Winslet and James Cameron finally team up again. Exactly 25 years later, because this Monday, the 19th, is the 25th anniversary of Titanic. Woo! Um, so, Kate Winslet is in there. So this movie really focuses on character. Another thing, a lot of people have been saying, unlike the first one that felt unoriginal, because combined with stories you've already seen, this movie is James Cameron saying, Do you remember me? Do you, rem do you remember me? Do you remember me? He does his own greatest hits. And let me tell you something. And not a bad thing. Because he takes the best stuff from his filmography, like Terminator 2, Aliens, Titanic, True Lives, and says, boom, 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 boom. And it's like, okay, Cameron. I don't, I like it. I mean, from Aliens, what I like is, one of the things this movie really as a theme focuses on fathers and sons, or parents and their kids. Something that James Cameron is a fucking pro at. You know, when you look at Aliens, the one thing that works so well in that movie, not just the Aliens, the Xenomorphs, it's the mother-daughter relationship between Ripley and Newt. That's the thing you walk out of the theater remembering. Not the aliens. It's the father, the mother-daughter relationship. You go see Terminator 2, and yes, the action and the visuals are great. But do you, what else do you walk out of that movie? It's that father-son, the T-1000 and John Connor relationship that builds. And here, we get that. We get Jake Sully and his two sons and how that dynamic is. Then we also, on the antagonist side, without getting into spoilers, because it was never revealed in the trailer, we get another dynamic of a father and son. And I'm like, this is the stuff I'm, I'm loving in this movie. This is the stuff that I love that Cameron is doing. And then like that, when we get into the greatest hits, we get, you know, we get true lives. The parents have to go save their children. 
We got that in the third act and two lives. Or the ships are going down underwater, singing. We get a whole corner, corner, corridor scene of water filling up. And we got, you know, no, uh, Zoe Saldana and her daughter at the track underwater. See the water building. He even shows a stairwell of the water coming up. Like in Titanic. Okay? I'm watching these two Navi running down the corner while the water's, you know, filling up. And I'm like, it's Jack and Rose in Titanic. All over again. And you know what? Fine. And we're going to steal, steal from what worked in your filmography. Like I said, in college, I made a senior film that I kept playing football. I played to my strength. I made football films in high school. I go, you know what? I'm going to do what I know what I know how to do. And that I know how to do great. Boom. So, James Cameron. I salute you. Oh yeah, the humor. And then he had a lot of humor. This is definitely James Cameron's humor. What do you think? And look at the I talked about aliens. It has the alien dynamic too. Sorry about that. So it has the alien dynamic of the antagonist or this army group. Very similar to aliens. The army group going in and get the xenomorphs. Oh man, I was watching this going, oh, that, that one... You're the tough chick in Aliens. You are like the Bill Paxton character in Aliens. If only the if Bill Paxton was alive today, he would have been in this movie, and he would have been one of the army army characters. No doubt about it. Because you can tell by the dialogue and the way this one character is, that is 100% supposed to be Bill Paxton. 100 I mean, I mean, it's like, I was waiting for this character to go, Oh, man! Man! You know, welcome to the suck. I mean, we're screwed. We're totally screwed, man. You know, like in Aliens. But, so we had that element. I forgot to bring up. Well, one thing I go back to the humor. This movie has 80s humor. As an 80s James Cameron humor. I mean, the dialogue that the antagonist, the main ta antagonist says, is 100% 80s action James Cameron humor. And guess what? I don't care if we're in 2022. I dug it. I mean, I was laughing every time. Was it, was some of it cheesy? Oh, yeah. But once again, we gotta remember, this is 80's James Cameron thinking. This is Aliens, James Cameron. Oh yeah, Ura. The score, once again, excellent. Uh, it's weird, I'm watching this, man. Some, some of the musical beats sound like something out of Titanic. Even in the moment when we get into the third act, when it kind of feels like Titanic, I'm hearing this music going, it doesn't a lot like Titanic music. I don't mind, but it has a little Titanic feel to it. Even in the score. So I know you. Also, I did not expect this to happen. But this movie takes a little bit of an emotional turn at the very end. To the point that I had a few little watery eyes. I did. No joke. The way, and I won't say what happens, but the way that James Cameron presents it on screen was well, actually pretty brilliant very touching and like I said a little emotional well let's get into some of my negatives as much as the visual effects look great there were moments in this over three hour movie moments throughout that it did look like a video game and I realized what James Cameron did he shot this movie in 48 frames per second Almost like the Hobbit films. But then he also, in certain moments, he brought it back down to 24 frames. 24 frames per second. And not only that, but when a character would move, 
like turn real quickly, it definitely felt like a video game. Like the scene, like the video of a video game. Like it wasn't all the time, not like the whole movie, but there are certain moments in the movie, and this was in the 2D screening, so I don't know how it looked better maybe in 3D, but in the 2D, every time a character would move quickly, to maybe grab something or whatever, or to turn, it looked very video game-like. So I did notice that throughout the movie in, in moments. Not in the whole movie, just in little moments. Also, there's a long stretch of this movie where we almost like forget about the antagonist group. Like, I would say there was a good 30 to 40 minutes where when we finally got to, when we finally got back to them, I was like, oh yeah, them. Yeah, that's how long we were, they were gone. I mean, that was a long time. They should have, like, cut back and forth more. So that was another thing. And I do think this movie could have been shorter at 3 hours and 12 minutes. Um, I think even 2 hours and 45 would have been good. The original was 2 hours and 40. So even the I said, I think there are definitely certain, a few scenes that you could have shortened or cut out. But, <clears throat> on the other hand, I like how this film focused on more character development. I like how it let scenes breathe and take their time. So on one hand, I think it could have been a little bit shorter, but I'm not saying by much. Even if the movie was in exactly three hours and you cut out 12 minutes. Fine. So overall, I am going to give this a higher rating than the original. I would give this a 4.5 out of 5. Would me and my top 10 at the end of the year? I don't know. We'll see. But I'm not going to hold that right now. Because like the original Avatar, I was, when I first saw it, I was like, oh yeah, this movie's great. And then I went back and watched it, and I was like, it ain't that great. It ain't great. Visually, yeah. But overall, not that great. Um, and guess what, I haven't seen the original Avatar since I bought it on DVD in 2010. So, there you go. On my other James Cameron movies, Terminator, Terminator 2, Aliens, True Lives, Titanic, I'll watch those at least once a year. But, um, yeah, I do think this was a better film than the original. Well, let me know in the comments below, did you see Avatar? The Way of Water, did you like it more than the original, did you not? What were your positives, what were your negatives? Once again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you have, let other people know. So I'm not just looking at my subscribers and feeling all blue. <laughs>